G'day and welcome to part two of bootstrapping a mill. In the first part I made up some T-nuts uh, as well as showed you uh, techniques for making parallels, making some fences, all those sorts of things. Uh, very simple. All, all it really required was a drill press and uh, an angle grinder and, and away you went. In this particular episode I'm going to be making some angle plates and some V-blocks. Now these are a little bit more complex but don't really need much more than what you've you've already got um, so in terms of you know you need some t-nuts and some studding and, all, and, and straps and things to hold things down but they don't have to be complex things uh, easy enough to do and so I'm using my my strap clamps and my the t-nuts for my mill uh, just because yeah you've seen how to make those so you know as far as I'm concerned I get a free pass on that Angle plates are handy things to have because you can strap things to the sides of them and so I've got some bits of angle iron. Um, 10 mil wall thickness, I think that's uh, 90 or 100 by 125, something along those lines. Right, And I'm going to... I'm going to put those up like that. Right. I'm going to clamp that down and then I'm going to use a fly cutter to just to, to skim off the, so the, the face and clean that up. Now I'm making a pair of these because these are one of those things that it is better to make a pair. But once I've got that face cleaned up, I'll show you how to make sure these things are, are square because it's, it's pretty pointless having one of these things if it's got a bit of a slope on it. Uh, if you were making one of these and you decided that's a bit flimsy, I would have put a brace in there. Yeah, you could weld a brace in there. The, the only thing with that is that you'll need to make sure you do that before you do any machining because as soon as you machine it, uh, sorry, as soon as you weld it, you're going to be putting some stress into the part. And so if you've machined this and so it's nice and flat and then you've got stress in it, uh, you're in, you, you've you just mucked up your good work. However, uh, these are just going to be a, a plain set of angles, uh, nothing special, just something that can be used for setup. The other thing about this stuff too is that you know, even if you, you, you make up better ones later, there's nothing saying you can't use this for doing setups for your welding or something like that where you, know, you don't want good stuff necessarily because you get spatter all over it. I've skimmed the large surface of my uh, wannabe angle plates and if I put a, 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 a rule on there, straight edge, you can see that that's, that's basically pretty flat. There's a little bit of a, a bulge there but nothing that I'm getting get too concerned about at the moment. However, if I get a square against that, there's a lot of daylight up the top here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this down to the table and then using some shims, I'm just going to jack the back up until I get that vertical. Right? The idea is that that's then vertical. I can then clamp the other ones on these four holes, skim off the top of that, flip that over, and I should have basically a right angle here. I can also then, once I've got these faces you know right angled cleaned up I can do the same thing on the short side and do another skim on here if I if I want to I'll see about that one the whole center is here that's you know, basically where I can get my nut uh, before I start running into the radius but you might be able to pick up there's some very faint scratch marks there that's where my slots are going to be and that spacing there is the spacing of my T slots it's also the spacing of my uh, one, two, three blocks that I made. And so the idea is going to be that I should be able to clamp a one, two, three block onto here and have all the holes lined up. And so, you know, if you haven't thought about doing that sort of thing, I'd suggest that, you know, maybe that's, that's worth doing. So, you know, if you're making a set of these, pick what you're going to be clamping on there. If you think you're going to put one, two, three blocks on there, maybe pick your centers because of that. This is my squaring up setup. So I've got a square uh, on the front surface there. I've got a shim in the back and I've just moved that in and out a little bit to get that so that that surface is flat. This surface is actually, it's down here uh, and it's, it's up along this edge, but that's okay because that's, that's square. I can now bolt the other surface of my uh, wannabe angle plate on here and I should be able to run a skim across and that flat surface will be square to this surface which is vertical and so therefore uh, fingers crossed I've got a square angle place. I'm then going to be able to flip that over not have to worry about the shim, dress the other face up, up the, the short face up and then I've got two um, and that way I can then 
if I if I feel I need to, I can flip things around and you know reskim these or whatever I want to do there. I've just run a, a, a pass with my fly, fly cutter across here, and what was happening was here, uh, as the cutter was going around this way, it was actually digging into the material a little bit and picking it up. So I'm, this is this is fine for a roughing cut. I'm now going to go back over here with the fly cutter from this direction, which will hopefully push it down. And I've put a couple of machinist jacks here now. If you're ever in a bind for a machinist jack, um, you know, properly made ones are, are, are good because they're nice and sturdy, but one thing that'll get you out of trouble perhaps is this. This is, the, this is a rod out of my strap kit with a standard nut on one end, but they also have an extended nut. And what I've found is if you put that under there, you can actually wind this thing up. And with a bit of luck, and you might have to put a packer or two under there, you'll get basically a, a, a you know a machinist stand so um, that's that's a little trick that might get you out of trouble Just taking this off the um, the first piece. So this is the second surface, and as you can see, that one is basically square. Now that I've got two surfaces that are square and two surfaces on the other one, uh, I can put some holes or slots in the in the back surface here. I can clamp both together. I can do another skim across these large surfaces. I can clamp them to each other and run a skim across the top of these to square all these up. You know, there's all sorts of things I can do now that I've got two square surfaces that I can, I can bolt together. Uh, the back is still grotty, but a bit of clean up with the wire brush I think should fix that. Uh, you can paint that if you like. Several options here. One is you can put in some, uh, well in this case because I've got uh, 3 8 diameter hold down bolts, uh, I could put in a 10 millimeter slot. I could put in a 12 millimeter slot and that would then allow me to use the uh, the T-nuts uh, which helps because I don't have to worry so much about having a wrench on both sides to um, to do things up. The other thing you can do is what I've done with um, the, the false table on my rotary table and just put some tapped holes there at appropriate centre. So entirely up to you what you want to do but that's one way to get an angle, uh, angle plate uh, on the cheap. And um, as I said before, you know, it, it may be one of those things you use it until you can you can afford something better or you can use that to make something better. But uh, it's a starting point. Just about to mill the last slot out of the uh, the first angle plate. Uh, I'm chain drilling through just to reduce the amount of load on the on the mill. Uh, notice too, I've got some some jacks under here holding that down so it doesn't vibrate. I, I probably should have done this for the um, uh, the shorter overhang but certainly it's needed for the, for the longer overhang and once again these can just be some bits of stock about the right size and, and these can be some bits of stock about the right size I'm just using these because I've got them so I'll uh, go in here do this and then that'll be one plate complete I then flip that over and you know repeat for the for the same uh, on the other side here are my two angle plates uh, I've given a bit of a, a, a brush with the wire brush on the uh, on the, the bench grinder. I need to get in in there and still clean up that, but uh, the rest of it's not too bad. And probably in there with two to to you know take the uh, the edge off there. They're uh, you know they're, they're, they're flat, they're square, and the uh, the T nut sits in there. So you know that's that's all I need really. And as I was saying earlier. Uh, uh, that's the same pitch as my one, two, three block, so I can I can bolt direct into there. So put a put a T nut there, length of studding, nut, nut, and I've got a I've got a shelf on there. So you know for setups and that sort of thing, that interchangeability, that modularity is is really what you want. Occasionally it's handy to have a V block. Uh, you can lie rods in the in the tops of the T slots. This is what this is destined to be. It's two bits of angle. I've got a bit of uh, what's that about eight millimeter flat between them. These two bits of angle are parallel and then 
and they're also sitting on a bit of three mil stuff and then I'll tack a bit of angle on there both sides remove the the flat cut those off and uh, and fully weld now the reason for the um, the three millimeter spacing is that I can then turn that over I can put a bit of pipe on the mill table with a with a, um, a strap over the top making sure that's level and I can come along and I can skim these to make sure that these are actually in line with each other these are destined for using for welding so uh, I probably won't bother with that but there you go um, uh, do it yourself V blocks if, if uh, that's what you desire once you have one of these you can then get a block of steel put that in there and then come in with a cutter and make a shall we say a, a, a proper V block so um, you know interim step once again I welded up my collection of bits of angle and if all you wanted to do was just hold a, a bit of round stuff there while you are welding onto it or, or you know drilling a hole in the right spot that's probably all you need however you know they do they do rock a little bit and so the way I'm going to you know true these up is I've put a put a strap across there which just happens to look like my tall fence and on a bit of pipe lying in the t-slots as I was, I was suggesting and I've got that so that from there to the table and there to the table is is pretty much the same so provided this is cylindrical this is level and so I can come along with my fly cutter and I'll just take a smidge off that leaving it at the same height come around and do the same here and then do the same for this one and I should have fingers crossed a matching set of, of uh, you know basic V blocks for those of you who are wondering the reason for the angle on the end here is so you can actually clamp down on it now whether you want to put a hole in there or whether you just want to leave it so you can put a, a tab on there don't know and as far as I'm concerned I don't really care I guess it's up to you but um, that's one advantage of this Here are today's finished products. Uh, that's the angle plate and I've, I've started cleaning that up so I can uh, put some paint on or something like that. And there's the, uh, the V block with the, the bottoms um, fly cut. So that sits flat now and that'll, that'll uh, do quite nicely. Thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next one.